You know what's great in the morning? Cereal. Starting your day off right with an amazing cereal that tastes great and that mm. is fantastic for you. Now, while Catalina Crunch is helpful for a keto or low-carb lifestyle, it's great for anyone who wants a nutritious way to enjoy their favorite snacks. If you're trying to eat better, Catalina Crunch cereal has the crunch you crave without the empty carbs. It's absolutely delicious. Most zero-sugar foods don't taste delicious, but Catalina Crunch really nails this. Zero sugar, low-carb, keto-friendly. Plus, it packs a whopping 11 grams of plant-based protein and 9 grams of fiber per serving. Taste for yourself why over 10,000 customers rate Catalina Crutch five stars. They've got eight crave-worthy flavors to choose from, like nostalgia-inducing cinnamon toast, decadent dark chocolate, and creamy chocolate peanut butter. Not sure which flavor to try first? That's why they have a variety pack. Gluten-free, grain-free, non-GMO, only real clean ingredients, nothing artificial. See why Catalina Crunch Cereal is the fastest growing cereal brand in America. Just go to CatalinaCrunch.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. For 15% off your first order plus free shipping. That's CatalinaCrunch.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. Not sure which flavor to try first? Try a variety pack and check out their delicious cookies and snacks mixes while you're at it. Again, that's CatalinaCrunch.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. With or 15% off your first order plus free shipping. And welcome to the show in five, wow. four, <laughs> wow. three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to his thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's that chick ain't that Welcome to another podcast episode. Smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Make it, make Welcome, welcome to another episode. We are shooting this live on Monday for our Patreon because our good friend Angel Lakita Moore Tanksley, the actress, is leaving us. I am. This week to pursue her dreams of being a starlet on Hollywood Boulevard. Star She's moving out of these United States. She's shooting in Antigua for six years. I'm going to be on the beach with my cheeks nice. we, should go to, we should go to Antigua. <laughs> We're doing P Mountain. So uh, we P told Valley. the Patreon this, this uh, <laughs> a little while ago. We want to tell you now, uh, over the next month or two, because of Angel's show and then Kevin's show, we'll be shooting more episodes virtually. Uh, Angel will be out of town for like a month or so, and I'll be shooting during our regular shooting time. So we'll be shooting virtually probably for about six no. Uh, into May. Into well, May. Mid May, well, May, probably. Yeah, mid May. Ooh. Mid May, probably, more than likely. Uh, but you will get your videos. Oh, you, you gonna get, get your, these podcasts. You these will jokes. get these podcasts because you know what we got. We're going to do it. Uh -huh. That's what we do. All right. So, uh, first things first, on the docket, this kind of went viral ish over the weekend. Uh, Broderick Steve Harvey. Okay. Is that his first name? Steve Harvey, first name Broderick. Broderick? Well, he should go by that. Broderick is very masculine. Hey, I'm Broad. Broad Harvey here. I don't think no. he have the same career. No, no, you don't. I'm saying he picked the, the nickname of Broderick. Broderick. No, Broderick. This though. is the evening news. Nah, you, with the, Broderick. Steve Harvey is just a smooth showbiz Broderick name. Broderick Harvey? No, nah, man. That's the type of person you want to sleep with. Who are you with, Broderick? So, Brod so Broderick, oh, his son named Broderick Harvey Jr. Broderick is a strong name. You ain't never met no Broderick who couldn't fix a carburetor. Mm, right. He can lift know. up heavy things. That's I what don't you know think. Steve Harvey. Is his middle name? Yeah, Broderick Stephen Harvey. Oh, yeah. that's that's fire right there. 65 years out. old. He missed out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Steve, Broderick Steve Harvey was owing the IRS $20 million. Okay. Because people were stealing from him and having to pay six, and he had to pay six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in back taxes alone. A, a month. No, I thought that was a year. Mm -mm. A month for oh. four years. Wait, now come on, now. I Steve, Broderick Steve Harvey now. had to pay six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. No, Kevin, yes. that can't be right. That can't. He owed them twenty million, Angel. For four years. That's a lot of he money. He never went to jail because he never missed a payment. Here's the video of him talking about on the Earn Your Leisure podcast. I never he missed said a payment. And for four years in a row, I was sending 650000 a month ah. to the government. Plus, 
Oh, wow. I had to pay my current taxes. 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 I couldn't get behind on nothing. And I was living. All right. So for those of you math whizzes, $650,000 a month. That's $31 million. That's what he, that's what he had to pay? That's 650000 times 48. Mm-hmm. Is thirty one million two hundred thousand dollars? Sounds about right. First of all, I ain't gonna hold you. I never thought Steve Harvey was not rich. I didn't realize he was that rich. That's what I'm. Where do you get six hundred fifty thousand dollars every month, dog? So he basically. So there's an article. The article said uh, basically, this is why he took every job. That, that he could get. I so Steve Harvey still does his radio show. Yeah. He never stopped mm-hmm. that with all the oh, other stuff. Bread off that, that, oh, man. Them terrestrial radio shows. Mm-hmm. Him and I think he was he right under Tom Har- uh, Tom uh, Joyner. Tom Joyner. As far as black people go, mm-hmm. I don't okay. know if they were bigger than like the world. But I think Tom Joyner was him and, and Steve was number two. And that and that show is syndicated Everywhere. everywhere yeah that's strawberry letter strawberry <laughs> letter is his own podcast by the way i don't know yeah, if you he knew makes that. 20 million a year just off his radio gig uh, uh according to this jesus 20 million dollars a year allegedly we this this podcast is <laughs> listen <laughs> ain't, now up. steve project steve harvey's 65 years old yeah right i often think about this like angel and i are relatively young mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to hollywood as far as like um at the beginning of our careers, when you look at, I, I, this is a, I'll just tell you guys this. We're family. When you look at Wikipedia's of them, of them big actors, their early years often be well into their thirties and often early forties. Mm-hmm. Right. Steve Carell, he was 44 with the office when he booked the office. Yeah. He, all the stuff he done mm-hmm. since the office, he started at 44. Now he did stuff prior. Yeah, he did. So we're still in the early years part of our Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Career wise, it's gonna be um, ER and 911 and atypical. That's all gonna be in your first click. Mm-hmm. And then your next click is gonna, be, gonna some, be success. It's gonna be some fire. And then your next click gonna be uh, philanthropy. Because mm-hmm. I know that's important to you. It is very important. But sometimes, oh, that's a, that's a word. That's a word. Sometimes you just gotta realize. See, it feels like you're at the end. Oh, come on in here. Come on. It feels like you're at the end. Uh-huh. It feels like you're stuck. Mm-hmm. Huh? But hunch your neighbor and say you're still in the early years. Did you say hunt? Hunch your neighbor. Hunch. Hunch, hunch you're not hunt. Not, not like sex hunt. They say that in church. And they just mean like hit him with your arm. Oh, like, I ain't never heard that. Oh, yeah. I heard. I, we say hunch your neighbor and say this here. That is, no, that I mean, is not COVID, safe to they, say. No, they say hunch, hunch your neighbor. Your neighbor. Hunch your neighbor and term. say I'm still in my early years. Now, you could be 38, 40. 47, mm-hmm. Sam Jack, he ain't booked nothing big till he was 40 something. Come on. And I'm talking about Sam was already receding, balding, and uh-huh. coming to America, uh-huh. which was in the 80s. Uh-huh. Since then, he did over 100 movies. Uh-huh. Tell somebody I'm still in the early part of my career. Hey, See, I'm cause... still I'm still in the early Tell part of my career. Tell salt. This, this, that, is that this pepper, is pepper or salt? This is Pepper, but salt you too. Tell them both. I'm still in the early part of my career. Early part of my career. You feeling like you're stuck. You feeling like it's over. And God has orchestrated this. Mm-hmm. That the next five years going to make the last 15 worth it. Hey. They're going to call you an overnight success. But it's been a long night. Huh? Angel been here, what, 17 years? Ooh, I've been here. Scratching and clawing. Uh, uh, Put uh. that new unit in. Uh, didn't I know? Audition with Kev reading behind the camera. Uh, I switched units. Switch the unit. Yes, I did. And book the role. Hey, Tell yeah. somebody, yeah, yeah, that I'm just getting started. Yeah, yeah. You know how much money you have to be making a month to pay someone Three, almost three quarters of a million dollars monthly. monthly. So be, in order to break even. That's not even actually, including his expenses. Yeah, no. He said, I was still And living. what he was currently paying the IRS. So let's just, let's just add another hundred grand safely for his current money. And say $750,000, that's three quarters of a million dollars every month. When did Think Like a Man come out? The, the movie. 
like a man. That's so much money. 2012. I'm not even wrapping All right. So in the article I was reading, he said that he was paying up until he had a big project in 2012 and he paid it all off. And I was like, I bet it was Think Like a Man because mm -hmm. it was based off of his book. Yeah. And I know that made a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm if I'm Steve Harvey, I don't know this, but if I'm Broderick Stephen Harvey, mm -hmm. I say, hey, Will Packer, we going to make this movie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you're not going to pay me no flat fee. Yeah. I'm going to receive back in. Oh, absolutely. And that movie, I believe, grossed $100 million. I can believe that. We'll call Tony Baker on it. He's not going to well, answer. Gonna pick up right now. You know, you don't uh, know that. That's see. definitely not going to Unless happen. it was podcast. I'm day, pretty sure that Tuesdays movie was world. a smash success. It was. Uh, let's see what it was in the box office. Oh, 96. I was close. And Think Like a Man 2 is $70 million. So that's almost $200 million. I mean, uh, he didn't get all of it. No, no, he didn't get all of it. But he probably got... He got enough to pay the IRS back. Let's just what, what he hadn't been paying him because he had already paid a certain amount there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's stories like these. This is why Melissa and I, our our person prepares our taxes, uh -huh. but we pay our taxes. Yeah, I I, I gotta oh, send yeah. that. I, we we make sure we send that off. Yeah, oh, because yeah. I I don't I listen. I've heard this happen to athletes. Brianna got money stolen from her. You 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 do got to trust people. I get it. And especially the more money you make, they end up getting business managers, accountants, CPA. Yeah. They have like a whole team of financial people. But I always want to be the person who finally is like, because you the IRS ain't going to, if you my accountant, they're not going to be like, Angel, why you didn't do that? Right. They're going to be like, Angel, where's Kev at? And you'd be like, but you stole, I stole it. That, that don't matter to, to I. We want our money. I want my money. When, when a mobster, when you owe them money, you don't say I, I had it, but you know, I gave it to somebody else. They're not beating that person up. No. Because you borrowed from me. You can tie with it. They still don't care. <laughs> they, <laughs> now, this is what I really want to know that he didn't say, at least in this part of the clip of the story is, I know his accountant died and that's how they, they uncovered that he had been being robbed of his money mm -hmm. because the accountant that worked for his accountant saw the receipts mm -hmm. of, oh, they haven't been cashing your check. They just been debiting the money from your account that matches the check amount. Did you know that? No, I didn't see that. Okay, so he was writing the checks to the IRS. Steve was? Yes. Writing the check to the IRS. The accountant had access to Steve's account. So what they would do is they would just debit the debit exact the same payment. amount. Right. And keep the check. Steve wasn't checking to see, was that a check that cleared or what oh, was it? It was genius. The amount that he wrote the check for is all they would take. So he gave the check to the accountant to pay the IRS. Yes. And they matched the amount. Yes. And debited for, say, a million dollars. Right. You wrote IRS a million. They took out a million. Yeah. And Steve never checked. Never to checked. To see that that was the IRS cash check. they have authorization to pull that money. See, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to that point. Ever. This is one reason, and I don't even, listen, there's no way I would owe the IRS that much money because I've never made <laughs> that much, okay? It's coming. Oh, yeah. No, very close. My first million is this year. But this is the thing. I'd love to make a million like dollars, that. too. Go ahead. This is the thing. You know what? Just, just don't. No, hey, you Jay, yo, stop. Okay. You I changed my shut mind. Up. You did it to yourself. We be over here having fun, walking in our truth. Mm -hmm. And then you want to play in our face. You want to sit here and play in our face like we stupid. Like these beautiful people that are here commenting, being here with us. Don't see you can't pretend like you're broke, broke while your wife is out here flexing on these hoes. That's true. So she's she didn't blown the cover she's already. Got a, she got a backdrop of, of props that are a full collection. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> y'all don't pretend like y'all got four dollars no I more. Was, I so drive a Ford Ranger. I was like, look at all these props. <laughs> exactly. He got a Maserati for a prop. I, I I drive it. That's kind of wild. You just actually. yelled what you drove. <laughs> all right. What was you saying? <laughs> I was saying, stop playing in my face. Okay, okay. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I get all of my money first. So even mm. for my acting gigs, I get all of my... The only people that get my money first is my commercial agent. Mm -hmm. That's it. But every... And even that might have to change one day. I'm going to be like, hey, I know this is your company policy. Give it here. I want it. Give first. it to me, Angel. Yes, it is mine. You will get your check from this. 
But I, you know the reason why I do that? Oprah. Oprah says she, st- she still signed her checks. That, exactly. And I'm going to listen to the billionaire. You, you laugh at me when I be over here writing my checks. Huh? You be laughing at me. <laughs> but what I know is what I know is that if when you have any money that is worth stealing, somebody will try to steal it. Listen, stealing is easier than working. And Steve Harvey works so much, he don't got time to check his account not, to match. We're not promoting stealing. It's, huh? the, we're, just, we're not promoting stealing, just by the way. But we are. Okay. <laughs> America was built on stolen stuff. <laughs> Come on. Listen, listen. they reward mm-hmm. thieves. A whole lot of land One stolen. of my favorite stories, not favorite in, in that way, but like favorite flips is the Kennedy family mm-hmm. who made a fortune off of bootlegging mm-hmm. during prohibitions, flipped that. And went so legitimate that one of their sons was the president of these United States. That's something black people could have never done in America, Mm. right? Not got away with bootlegging for that long, not made no fortune, and not uh, had that same family Mm -hmm. be president of the United States. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like if Jay-Z became president of the United States. Well, I and mean, a family could be leg- a black family could be legitimate the entire time and still not become your president right. of the United States. I think there's other. I mean, you talk about branding and rebranding. Like they start you bootlegging? Mm-hmm. Selling the illegal. They was they was doing crimes twice. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And then completely legitimate. You know NASCAR came from bootlegging? No, houseway. So, NASCAR, so Bootlegging cars, they would soup them up so they could uh, uh, evade law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And then it was like such a uh, competition between who had the fastest car to get away from the police that they were like, I'm, I, I drive better than Josh. And Angel like, no, no, I drive better than you. All right, let's race. Forget the bootlegging. Let's just do a car race. Mm. And that's how they started NASCAR. It started from souped up, basically Fast and the Furious mm-hmm. Prohibition era, Don't which is, I think His this is. His great grandfather oh, was a bootlegger. Snap. That's where the whole series should go. Back in time, That'd be fire. Dominic Toretto's grand granddad. What series? Fast and the Furious. Because I was oh, wondering how they gonna keep making movies. That's why Dom's so big on Family because the mob family ah, when they were bootlegging. Yes. Yes. This is actually an easy tie. And they can go back to horse racing. Mm-hmm. And Universal's gonna steal what kind it. What kind of character did my horse have? We're gonna have nothing on it. Nothing. I want to see Tyrese and Dom in a horse. And I want the, all the actors to play themselves, not younger and then people. And I want Paul Walker to be rotored in and just say, just forget about it, cuz in, in the program. <laughs> one of my him. favorite clips. I said, forget about it, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally missed that the first time I saw that Me movie too. when Paul I Walker said you. that. I didn't, I didn't recognize it. But well, when nothing it came back, was too far of a stretch to be said in those movies ever. But no. when you play it back, that's just out of this world. My yeah. kids didn't even realize that Fast and the Furious used to be about car racing. Because they what came in. What is it about now? It's usually Saving about either stealing something or finding somebody who is known for stealing something. Oh, I thought it was still about cars. It's about cars, but it's not about racing them. Is that, yeah, about racing cars. Remember the stuff. first three, I believe, were about racing? Michelle Hill said, yeah. Fast and the Furious 25, the beginning. <laughs> I, when you just asked the question, when I just asked the question, well, what is Fast and the Furious about? Somebody just yelled, family. <laughs> That's right. Angel. You're right. I don't even know why I asked the question. I should have known. Family. Family. Anyway. But Steve Harvey, bless his heart that he had to do that. I want to know what happened to, I know the CPAs did, but I want to know what happened to anybody who benefited off of the CPA stealing from him. Listen, he probably died because of that guilt. No, people don't You don't think so? I would not feel guilty. Really? No. You would just steal freely? I would steal so freely and have so much very fun. If that, if I am willing to do that, not saying I'm willing, but if, here's the thing, if I'm willing to do it, I'm willing to do it. Like There's no point in feeling guilty about it. Right. If I'm willing to do it, like I've grown out of that. I did that when I was having sex younger. I'm, I'm over that. <laughs> where I was like, oh, I feel so bad that I did this. I realized that's stupid. I thought you stupid. were a virgin upon your wedding day. I was. <laughs> In certain areas of my body. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, we just had a really in-depth sex conversation with our son yesterday. Did you? Yeah. It with was Lamar? like uh, with Lamar? Oh yeah. He but he already knew. He was like, but what about this? 
<laughs> no, but with uh with the preteen, we had like a. Did you have the sex talk with your? We've had. No, no, no. With your parents. Oh no, absolutely not. I told you what my parent. What my, my sex talk came at nineteen. My mom was passing me in the hallway, and she was like, "You ain't have sex, have you?" And I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she was like, oh, you nasty and walked off. And that was the beginning and end of our conversation. Wow. You t- at what age did you tell her that? 19. <laughs> and she was three years late. Would she would she say this is true? Absolutely. Angel could call her right now. She could. Mm-hmm. I've I'm never talked to my dad about it, period. Real or step. Wow. Hmm. Never had no conversation with it. My mom and I had that one yeah, conversation. How in depth have of a conversation have you had with your boys? Like we went, we've had first of all, we've had multiple conversations. We've had uh first is like your body conversation, maybe about five or six years ago. Had another one in the more in-depth thing. I remember very clearly uh Joe was listening and Isaiah was laying on the ground staring at the ceiling, <laughs> like waiting for this to be over. When that David Dobrik stuff came out, we had a more in-depth conversation about consent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've actually used YouTube YouTubers to have consent conversations. We've been having con- consent and sex conversations mm-hmm. uh, more than one because the David Dobrik thing was like he was he he kind of fostered an environment where women didn't feel safe. Basically, mm-hmm. they said he mm-hmm. wasn't even the person there or, uh-huh. or doing it. From what happened, he was just uh, the leader in his environment. What what the allegation was? His environment created a uh, or he he fostered excuse me he fostered an environment that created that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, then we started talking about that. We basically were telling them like, obviously we don't want you to have sex until you're married, blah, blah, blah. Christian, Christian, Lord, oh Lord, we love you, love you. Uh, Then we were like, we feel like your, your best chance of not having any issues related to consent, your best chance, not every time, is not having sex with somebody you're not in a committed relationship with. Mm -hmm. If you're drinking or using drugs and having sex, you already can't give consent. She can't give consent. Mm-hmm. So you're already in trouble there. If you are having a one night stand and she remembers it differently and you don't, you're already in trouble there. So just please don't, mm-hmm. don't, <laughs> don't, and you know? don't. And that's the thing that sucks about parenting. I've been thinking about this more and more as my kids want to do more alone with, with their friends. We're not there. It's like, you have to train them up. And remind them and train them and remind them and train them and remind them and train them and remind them. And then you just have to hope they make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Because you can't control their decision making when you're not around. Right. You try to. But man, you just hope they make good choices. But you can't, you can't, you can't both coddle them and you can't be there with them every time. You just got to be like, come on now. Because if you get in trouble, you're going to be in trouble. Right. Right. The, 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 our whole conversation came from Marcus asking me if I saw turning red and I, I haven't seen it yet. And I was like, did you see it? He was like, yeah. And I was like, what'd you think? He's like, well, it was basically a movie about puberty. Mm. And I was like, how you know it was about puberty? He was like, it was pretty obvious. And I was like, Hey, did y'all have y'all sex health class yet <laughs> at your school? He said, actually, we just finished it. He was like, but our teacher was not qualified. To teach the class. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, no, they, uh, they really need to hire new teachers. And I was like, well, they should probably use indeed to get them. Oh, because let me tell you, (laughs) if you need to supercharge your hiring plan, you need to be a super, you need a super hiring partner. And that's indeed, if you're hiring, you need indeed because indeed is a hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed is on, the only job site where you are guaranteed to find quality applications or applicants and that meets your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. You find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of qualified candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you um, you only pay for the quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. 
Um, I used Indeed for looking for my personal assistant. I ended up um, hiring my niece instead because I wanted to use nepotism. But (laughs) if she was not actually available, I can tell you right now in a day, I got 30 qualified candidates that actually met my requirements that were worth me interviewing um, and that uh, had the skill sets that I specifically needed. Uh, <clears throat> which I was extremely shocked by. I was like, wow, this was a lot easier than what I thought because you always are like, hey, can somebody refer me to this or refer me to that? But like your network only knows so many people. So you're going to eventually have to go out of your network and you're going to want people, you're going to want, like they said, a super partner in hiring new staff. And as we scale up at both KOSS as well as uh, That Chick Angel, we got to have quality people to help us get to where we're going. And D makes it easy to hire great talent, according to Comscore. Indeed is the number one job site worldwide with virtual interviews. Indeed saves you time. You can message, schedule, and interview top talent seamlessly all in one place. And Indeed delivers four times more hires than all of the job sites combined, according to Talent Nest in 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post on ad.com slash HTT. HTT. Offer valid through March 31st. So y'all don't wait now. Go to indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. To claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash HTT. HTT. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need indeed. But no, really, though, uh, we. Okay. I love the extra added noise. Amen. Uh, we did have a. We've had the talk before. We uh, He had a book when I bought him a book when he was 10 to read on his body. And we talked about each chapter every day. And then yesterday it was a thing of, okay, so what you learn in your class? And was there anything that, like, you were left thinking, what is that? Mm-hmm. And I remember he said, the class, we just learned about STDs. All of them. That's what we learned about. It was STD this, <laughs> STD. I was like, well, those are important. Yeah. But it got really in depth. I was like, wow, I cannot believe I'm at this point that I'm having this conversation. And he was handling it like a pro. Mm. I said, you're really quiet. He said, I'm just processing it all. But He's the, such a sweet little boy. He is. He is. He, he is. is. Great. And I was like, I'm so proud of you that you feel confident in talking to us because I'm almost certain your brothers aren't going to talk to us. They're going to go to you. And Absolutely. We want you to have the appropriate yes. information. But there was a part of the conversation that was hysterical. I was very transparent with him about when I had um, the age in which I became sexually active. Mm-hmm. And I was like, your dad was a little bit younger than me. I looked to Marcus thinking he was going to give his age. He was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, that's the end of that part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. No ideas. I was like, okay. He all left right. you out there all, all alone? I was like, oh, okay. He said, yeah, he don't even know all that. That's what he told me afterwards. I was like, you know what? I wanted to give it to you whether or not you wanted to tell him. But we didn't even go into the wait until you married. I wanted to be like, boy, it's not worth the wait. No. <laughs> Oh <laughs> my! God. I did not say I did, but we didn't. We didn't put any of that on there. But we did. It was a very long conversation about consent. I was like, "That's the impo- most important part." Man, I, you know what? Uh, listen, I'm 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 not an idiot. I realize I was raised on shame mm-hmm. and all that stuff there, and I. All the shame, all the hellfire, brimstone, you're going to hell. None of it could separate me from the coochie. <laughs> all like, it did, all, let nothing se- separate me from this sin. Mm-hmm. I was I was adamant. I was adamant that I was going to do that sin. Yeah, you now, like, I felt one. guilty. Oh, big guilt. Mm-hmm. But it didn't stop me. It won't stop as you. As long as I'm not dying in the act, there's always time to repent. And I often repented mid-stroke. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, so God. So sorry, God. But I'm going oh. to finish. I mean, <laughs> if the rapture, because I was like, when well, the rapture comes right now, right. I, if I'm repenting in the act, <laughs> I'm going to make I'm it really, in the I'm, I'm, I, I can repent before. Uh, you, skipped the, you skipped the line a little bit. You hear me up here? Mm-hmm. You say you're omnipotent? Let me tell you what I'm finna do. I'm finna sin. <laughs> right. 
So I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm on the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in the sorry. act. I mean, there's there's millions of not millions, but hundreds of altar calls. Yeah. On Sunday. Yeah. Where I felt like the pastor might as well have been like, Kevin, I know what you was doing last night over in that football field. <laughs> Me? Football field. Oh yeah. Kevin. Oh, it's mm-hmm. cold out there. When you don't have no house and your parents' family never leaves the house and her family never leaves the, the house. Football field. You will get creative. I done did sex in places where you should not have <laughs> did sex. Movie theaters. Oh wow! I would pay that five dollars. I done seen some movies eight hundred times. Let's go see and that I'm talking again. about movie chocolate. <laughs> Ain't nobody watching that in the summer. I go up in there. I got some chocolate. All right. I'm talking about <laughs> breaking and in. I was committing two sins. I was breaking and entering to have the sex. Oh my God. The Lord, the, the, your repentance beforehand didn't cover nothing. Not, oh, mid, mid. <laughs> Pre, mid, post. Sorry, Jesus. Hold on. <laughs> Them bus rides home, I'd be like, just like eating right. Like, I'm going to do better next time. <laughs> and then let's be like, you want some ice cream? Yes. Yes. You already thinking about the next. That's the problem. I'm going to do better next time. Ooh, next time. I'm Where are we going to do this? <laughs> Where's next time going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it never. Um, so I told him and I, and I had to like, I had to tell him a little one, boy, one time I thought we was going to not make it because I never wanted Melissa to hear something about me from someone in my past. That was true that she didn't know. Ooh. So I told her everything. Oh, God. Oh, in one city. God. What? Mm-hmm. I told her everything, and mm-hmm. she was v quiet afterwards. <laughs> she was. I was like, because <laughs> I was like, well, I don't want to go back to El Paso, and you know, people can be shady. I didn't know where we would get married, and we're at the wedding. I don't want her a uh, girl to be like, mm, down at that Burgess football field. I'd have, I had a, a piece of him, and her be like, is this true, Kevin? Even if it was prior to you, I just didn't want nobody to have that on you. Mm. So I never. I felt more guilty to her than I did to the Lord. Because I wasn't all. That's what happens when you have the expectation. Yeah. Listen, just don't worry about that. If as long as I ain't related to him, we good. (laughs) Like I mean, there was no point in me being like, now go down the though. I know we're from the same town, but who? Oh well, Um, she ain't with you now. Y'all would have to had to see them people and know for sure. Yeah, I Because Lexington ain't a big city. Yeah, so I don't know. I could have spoken to somebody he's been with multiple times and not even That know. don't make you feel no way that a woman could have been like. Nope. You can do all that. <laughs> you know what you. He's mine. You, you may have had a one, but I got him on the tag. I know, you know he's mine. Mm, he's mine. <laughs> uh, I know he had to practice on somebody because he knew what he was doing by the time he got to me. Thank you. That's what I was. Thank you. Were you the one who taught him that? Girl, <laughs> may the Lord bless and keep you, honey. Thank you Appreciate so much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Because, girl. I had never had that done to me before, <laughs> honey. Didn't even know it existed. But because of you, mm, I live today. <laughs> I live. I live. <laughs> oh, yes, glory. Girl. See, God will use you. Uh-huh. You didn't even know he was preparing. You, he was preparing me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> through was, you. Through you. He was preparing. He went, See, the Bible says, watch that. He'll go before to prepare a place for me. Uh-huh. Hey. Uh-huh. You, you were part of his preparation. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, uh-huh. you were the come before. Uh, whichever <laughs> way you want to take it. But I appreciate you. Woo. Thank yeah. you, girly. Yes. I ain't going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They, look, give her a wet gift. <laughs> give her something. Oh my God! I ain't gonna be mad about it at all. No. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is an interesting way to to, to to make that work. You trained them up good. Trained them up in the way it should go. Thank yeah, that you. you raised them right. Yeah. But uh uh yeah. So when, with my kids, you just you talk to them. You t- you treat them well. This weekend was the first time we had. Jojo had went to the mall with his friends and mm-hmm. walked around mm-hmm. unattended. They did That's a great. mall hangout. His phone was on low. I was freaking out. He was on 12%, but he was like, I won't use it. I won't use it. Melissa stayed by. He didn't know. She was like, I'm going home. 
<laughs> she went and sat in the parking lot <laughs> because Jojo has a tendency to be like, I'm over this. Please come. I want to go away from here now. But instead, he wanted to go to Dave and Buster's and we were supposed to hang out as friends. But Melissa was one uh, was his mother and they couldn't go without an adult. At the same time, Isaiah was at a field trip. And let me just tell you all about the, the LAUSD. Mm hmm. And this is, uh, just so y'all know, my, my children are in public school, mm -hmm. okay? They are not in private. They ain't down at Sierra Canyon with Kanye and LeBron and them. No. Them is in public school with regular kids. They is all regular. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody regular, together. regular together in the public school, okay? Mm -hmm. Isaiah tells me, hey, <laughs> we've got a field trip. I need to be at the school at 5. I was like. What? Wait, what do you mean? 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. When did he tell you this? He told me earlier in the week, but okay. it wasn't processing. I was uh -huh. like, oh, he means I, I need to get picked up at 5. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. a couple of days before, he's like, okay, you got to drop me off at 5. And I was like, what, 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 what the field trip is? Now, mind you, I had already signed the field trip <laughs> two weeks ago. Okay, He told me about it. It was not clicking. He was like, yeah, the school's going to Hamilton for a field trip. I was like, oh, cool. Alexander Sign it. Hamilton. In my mind... Hamilton is performing for kids during the day. During the day, or and LAUSD is paying Matt, for a they got, matinee. They, they got the 2 p.m.? That's what my mind is thinking. Yeah. So maybe during school hours. That's what I'm thinking. This boy got to be at, he, mind you, he gets out of school at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I got to pick him up, bring a suit to him, because they had to dress up semi-formal. I got to show you all the picture. Um, bring a suit to him. I basically stayed here, dropped him off at 5. Okay, they had a pizza party before the play. Hamilton started at its regular 8 o'clock. The school sends us a thing. Please be at the school at 11.59 p.m. to pick up your children. I said, what are y'all saying to me? <laughs> y'all, it's night. He texted, hey, you got to pick us up at midnight. What? <laughs> Who did it? I'm tired. <laughs> I had to set an alarm. For 11.20, because I fell asleep. Of course you did. I'm in that bed. <laughs> I, had, I was so mad that I had to leave my home and bed to pick up a child mm -hmm. on a Friday night at 12 p.m. a.m., I mean. <laughs> okay? Children are supposed to go to the zoo, to the aquarium. Not when you're, they're your son's age, his big age. I'd the be, zoo. I'd be mad, too, if I wasn't in the room where it happened. The, <laughs> room where it the happened. aquarium. A midday baseball game. Something, so field trip is a replacement for school for me. Ah, uh, no, no. I don't want, what. first of all, what I'm supposed to do? Wait till grad night. Oh, uh, he's, but he's done then. He's out. Okay, I mean. He's out, Josh. You in 10th grade. I don't want to pick you up at midnight. I'm tired. Kevin. I'm in that bed. You shouldn't be that old. Why didn't you have Melissa's a night out? Why did you have her pick him up? Because Melissa had uh, the vacky had took her out. Oh, yeah. It took her down. She had a headache. We were supposed to go together. So oh, when my alarm went off, she did this, and that's why I knew she wasn't right with me. She's like, I ain't She said, hey, you got to go. What, you? We had talked about <laughs> us. She's like, we, no, you get She rubbed my, she patted my back. Like, hey, you got to get Isaiah. I thought we was going as a unit. <laughs> She's mm. like, no, nah, I'm turning. I'm over here <laughs> turning into a zombie. I can't. She was like, my socks are off. I, my socks are off. <laughs> I can't, you know, I once your go. socks are off, you can't put them off. Mm -hmm. you can't and you're put in the bed? Off. Oh, no. Josh, I got home at, because obviously they don't come right at right, 12. Right, what they say. I got home at almost one o'clock in the morning. You should have went down there and picked him up from the Hamiltons. Yeah, yeah, you could have gotten home. Faster. I wouldn't have saved much more time. That ended at eleven. Yeah, would, you would have saved a midnight, lot of time. That would, that would have been a fifteen-minute drive up the four hundred five. Yeah, that wouldn't have taken you that long. My kids went on field trip this weekend too. They got to go tour the SoFi Stadium. Mm. But during school? No, on the weekend. So this was the school took them on the weekend. Not the school. They in oh. a they in a black boy program. You is going to put them kids in stuff. You better know it. They got the they, VIP tour. They got the be where Jay-Z and Beyonce were. They said, you said my kids is in, a, in the black boy program. Yeah, come on. Where the black boys at? My kids are black and they boys. They surely did. They got to run across. They got to play on the field and do the combines. Uh -huh. And I was like, keep them as long as you want. Let them have this. Listen, little Marcus was like, I said, what was your favorite part? He said, all the VIP. Uh, excess. He was like, because it'll probably never happen. I, me and Marcus was like, don't you say it. You don't know don't what we gonna it. happen. Don't say it. Your children, them baby boys, they ain't gonna nothing, know nothing but wealth. 
<laughs> I hope not. Little Marcus, he he deserves more. <laughs> He's already spoiled. The fact that this boy is about to go to private school, he is spoiled. Let me tell you, at the private school cafeteria, they have a sushi bar, a waffle bar. There's somebody. They have an omelet bar. We were walking in, and the chefs were making omelets for the kids. Uh, it's omelet, different. A it's sushi different. Bar? Sushi bar. It is open the entire school day. When you have a little break, if you want to go in, get your little snack. Get your. Do you go to Rich Carlton Middle School? <laughs> Lit. That's what it feel like. He could get sushi as a snack. As a snack. As a snack. Let me get a little sashimi in between the. Uh, oh, are you kidding me? I am dead serious. Omelet bar. They the chef, down at the I'm MC Suite. What would they you do. like it's in your omelet? omelet they are making the omelet. Flip, flip, flip. Here you go. Yes. Dang. Bougie. Dang. That's fire. I showed my kids lunch on the other day. They had a bag of salad, no dressing. <laughs> I like to keep my kids humble, but and I didn't realize it was that humble. Milk in a bag yeah. is beyond the me. Milk, milk in the bag is just shut up and eat. A lot of people was like, Nick, this is jail food. Oh, the twins love the jail they food. They eat better in jail. They have collar. They have collar. But no, they also get the jail. I had to take the leftovers out of Cod's backpack. I said, what is this? A whole bunch of sa- uh, salad in a bag. I was like, take this coleslaw up out of your backpack. That's wild, Angel. It, this school is wild. It's in the middle of nature. There's a creek. A creek. Yes. It is Serenity Middle School. Um, they have a robotics class. <laughs> we wanted to put our kid in, uh, Zay Zay in the private school over here. Uh-huh. Uh, but I, I'm going to tell you when I knew I couldn't. They had robotics. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is when we first moved to L.A. Because our kids were in private school in, in Washington. And this is before I realized Private school ain't equal. Yeah, yeah it's uh-uh. a little, it's a little A private school in Tacoma, Washington is not private school in LA. No. Tuition. And I saw Columbus Short coming out of the private school mm-hmm. with his child. We got back in the car. <laughs> I was like, if Columbus, that? I kid you not. When Columbus Short came out with his child, I was like, all right. This is not, yeah. I don't care if that's his child. He's picking somebody up. The fact that he is here and a child he knows is here, this is not the place for us. Why? You called could have That went? was a hey, This was our first school year of of LA like we you just get a went from scholarship this school said no scholarship you lie I'm serious what they don't uh, want to know what school it was you know, I, I, I can't remember it's right on wood it is wood in woodland hills okay uh right off I want to say Topanga Canyon mm. or Canoga Park one of them two mm-hmm. and it's right off the 101 and hit tucked that away. left. Mm. Tucked away. Not even tucked. I'm talking about freeway. No creeks. Robotics. No creeks. <laughs> no creeks. And they weren't giving out no scholarship. They weren't giving out no scholarship. And Columbus Shore was up in there. Mm. And Isaiah Fresh was out of there. And then Isaiah <laughs> went to this little uh, middle school in Reseda. Mm-hmm. First day, somebody got beat up in the hallway and choked out. He said, he came home. He said, they grabbed the kid <laughs> like this. <laughs> and they pushed him against the wall. Oh. Oh, he no. said there was 35 kids in my school because his class in Washington had like 11 uh, in a class that fit 35. They had iPads. Baby he said they, he grabbed himself. They, he put him up against this. So he was like, Mommy, could you work at Chuck E. Cheese so that I could go to the type of school <laughs> we had in Washington? Please. Because I don't, I don't want, what if they grab me? And, you know, Isaiah ain't really no violent child. No. He's going to get socked out. Yeah, and listen. It was his first day on the yard. In this <laughs> he was like, this is not for me. That's how little Marcus uh, determines all of his days at school. He'll tell me how many fights. So there was another fight <laughs> at the school. Two fights. He's like, I don't even know what it is. There was a boy who slapped the AP. I was like, wait a minute, what's the AP? He's like, it's one of the assistant, or no, he said the PTA. And I was like, was it a parent? No, it's like an assistant teacher. He slapped the assistant teacher. He, and I was like, Dang. what is going on? He's like, mom, exactly. He is I feel like it. a little bit of that is good. A little bit of that fright. A that, little bit that of is, that. You need to know the world ain't going to cave for you all the time. Well, yeah, he definitely knows that. He wants to be out of that. He's <laughs> like, get me out of that. I saw this TikTok with this. Uh, it was a sketch, but it was really funny. The dude, big dude was sitting in the window and mom was sitting in the aisle and her daughter was sitting in the middle. And she was like, hey, could you just, you know, do you mind switching with my daughter for the landing? Because she loves to look out the window. And he looked at the kid and he was like, no. Here's a good chance for her to learn a valuable lesson. Sometimes things just don't go your way. (laughs) And then he ate a cookie and covered the window with his body. And I was like, yes. 
just that you're like that's sometimes what I need you need kids. to know it ain't gonna work out mm. you're gonna do all the stuff and it's gonna suck for you mm. like when i got fired i was just like hey they were serious about that <laughs> They really, they really, no, I'm cool with my kids not having to keep learning. Marcus ain't got to learn that lesson no more. You come up out of here and go with these little bougie kids and think life is a lot better. Listen, thank God it's good. You you go there and have yourself a good time. If some Now I don't have to worry about getting a phone call. I'd be worried if he called me in the middle of the day. I'm like, who done, who done fought? Did you have to fight somebody? I'd be like, oh, God. Have your kids ever gotten a fight at school? Si, he beat up somebody. Oh, I remember you told us that story. Yeah, Si was... Oh my he told God. that child. He did. He you don't told have no power, and like, I, I have power. <laughs> he was like, "I'll have to tell you." <laughs> the story is amazing. It's not as amazing as Mint Mobile, but I'll tell you about it after I talk about how easy it is to save money this year by switching to Mint Mobile. It is the first company to sell premium wireless service. Excuse me, online only. Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Tell them about it, Kev. Listen. The calls are crystal clear. The calls are crystal clear on Mint Mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I, I, I'm doing pretty well in life, but it doesn't mean I don't like to save a buck. Yeah. Okay, I'm all about saving where I can save mm -hmm. so I can spend where I want to spend. And I don't believe in just paying just to be paying. Mm -hmm. Right? And, it's perfect for having teenagers And that's what phones. I was going to say. I got two teenagers, mm -hmm. uh, a 15 and a 13. Yeah. Y'all don't need everything I got, mm -hmm. but we all can say, yeah. right? You don't need them big. See, people just get used to those big names, yeah. but you ain't paying for better service. That's You're just paying it. for the same name. To say you got the name. Mm -hmm. And Bubba said, man, don't worry about the name. Worry about the service and the cost, okay? Uh -huh. And the saving. How you how you going to beat 15 bucks a month, Angel? But right, right. I don't exactly. want two and $300 a, a doggone cell phone bill. Mm -hmm. For what? For my mm -hmm. kids to text Discord and and and... Never answer me anyway. If you're not going <laughs> to answer when I call or text, then let me pay 15 instead of 200 Right, exactly. And by going online, only eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all existing contacts. With Mint Mobile, choose the amount of monthly data that's right for you and stop paying for data that you never use. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month to get your new wireless plan for just 15 dollars a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free go to mintmobile.com slash sk sk that's mintmobile.com slash sk sk cut your wireless bill to 15 dollars a month at mintmobile.com slash sk sk now yo comprende Mm. See, see, mm -hmm. see, see, see. no no yo comprendo mm -hmm. uh, conjugate those verbs yes Tú comprendes. Sí, sí. Entiendes. What we were talking about is us understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. We In understand. español. In español. Mm -hmm. And uh, yo sabe, yo sabo, mm -hmm. yo, yo sé, sé. español. Uh -huh. uh, ah, because. Uh, ¿Por qué? Porque Babel. Yay! <laughs> Pulled it together, y'all. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college was not exactly the high point of our career. <laughs> I remember us having to uh, learn songs in Spanish. Eres tú, eres tú, eres tú, eres tú. You better sing, Angel. Tell the novela. I see, I see, eres tú. <laughs> That's what I remember from I high see, school. I see, I see, eres tú. <laughs> but what am I going to do with that? I can't take that to Mexico and think I'm going to get somewhere. You ain't going to go to Mexico and talk about some edits, too. They'll be like, okay, They're yeah. going to be like, who is you? I'm like, you speak English? Because <laughs> I be doing the babbles, too. Now, listen. Now, thanks to Babbel, the, le the language learning app that sold over more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn new language, whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with your family, or just have some free time. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world world yeah yeah i mean we big old adults all right big old whole adults <laughs> right we want to be able to have real conversations with people especially with traveling you want to be able to converse in the native language so that you can have a more um immersive experience and Babel is going to allow you to do that and i know a lot of people are traveling this summer i know a couple people who are moving to mexico for like a month um people who are really getting into over the seas travel as the world has opened up and this will just make the experience so much better Babbel's 15 minute lessons makes it 
perf a perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel's lessons are created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, you can purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, and you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of just three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code SK. SK. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code SK. SK. Babbel. Language learning for life. All right. Uh, this is an interesting little ditty. Mm -hmm. um, this TikToker, this had went viral. We didn't really cover it because I didn't know if it was real or not, but actually it was real. Uh huh. Black TikToker lost his job after moving into his cubicle to live rent free. Mm -hmm. So I saw this TikTok and I thought this dude was playing. I was like, oh, that's funny. Like, you know, basically he was like, oh man, my job is trying to make us come back in the office. It's too expensive to work and have a place to live. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move my stuff into my apartment, see how long they let me do that. Uh -huh. So he did that and it went viral. And uh, apparently he was really like trying to do it for real and not playing. Right. So the, the HR people was like, ha ha. All right. Now you can either uh, take your stuff back out <laughs> or you can not work here anymore. Yeah. And he decided he was not going to work there no more. And I was like, he was like, I'm just going to take a break from corporate America. But he was really, the thing that's interesting is he was like, I was really surprised they took that angle with it. Like I thought they would have, you know, uh, went with it and see where it went and things like that. For what? How, for what purpose? How does that benefit them? I don't know. I don't know why he thought that this company that is not a TikTok company it's like a it was like a design company in yeah. seattle or something like that like it is not helping them and it, it, their clients are not like oh my god yes this makes me want to work with this company that they have this vagabond <laughs> living in their office headquarters so my thing is uh now apparently there was not that many people working in the office mm -hmm. yet <clears throat> so it wasn't full so like i get the joke ha 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 but the, the funny thing is he did not, he was surprised they were not, they did not want him to do that. People are stupid. I mean, like, there, what is the purpose of being surprised? Like, you already knew what it was for you to be like, oh, they don't have security cameras. Right. Oh, what am I going to do when But he brought his own and shot it. I know, he shot it. But the thing is, is that he thought he could get away with it because they didn't have security cameras. If you thought they were going to be cool with it, why you need to get away with it? Why would you think they would be cool with it? That, that's what he knew. He they weren't cool with it. He being stupid. He just maybe he just wanted to get fired, and because uh, he did say uh, at the end of the article that he was like, I um, uh, maybe this is my cue to like venture out into the influencer marketing world. I don't I think it is. Not when you not when you homeless. That is not the cue. That ain't the cue. I'm listen. I understand that <clears throat> for some people the hitting rock bottom is the thing that motivates them to do the thing that they've always wanted yep. to do. Yep. But it don't got to be your, and, and sometimes when rock bottom, you're making it rock bottom. There's sometimes when things happen to you in life. And then there's times where you make things happen to you in life. Listen, pastor YPJ said that on Instagram today, he said that when he was a young pastor, he believed every, uh, thing that happened in his life. Every, no, no, it, the members would come to him with sob stories mm -hmm. and he believed every single one. And then later on, as he got more experience, he realized some people's situation is the result of their poor choices. Yes. And they know that that's why they are there. Let me play this video. I haven't listened to it. So let me just. God rejected him and the offering. He got angry and the Lord asked him this question. Why are you angry? It meant that Cain knew better. So this was not the first time they had given. Thus, at some point, Cain gave with the right spirit. 
because God looked at him. He said, you know that if you do what is right, it will be well with you, Cain. So you're aware of your actions. Don't ever let people trick you when they look like they don't know why things are going wrong in their life. I don't know why I'm going through this. You know why you're going through it. Because you got another woman on the side. You know why you're going through this. Because you have a secret habit that you're involved in that nobody knows about but you and God. You know why you're going through this. Because you're eating things that God told you not to eat. What? You know why you're going through this. Because you're not taking care of your children. You know why you're going through this. Because you are involved in something that is directly conflicting with God's will for your life. God said, Cain, it's all cap. You know why you're going through this. Listen, YBJ is my favorite pastor. I love him. Is he? He is. He is I so I've never heard him preach. Smart. I never heard him preach either. Um, <laughs> I've never heard him full preach. I've only <laughs> 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 Nigga, you said that out loud. He's my he's my favorite. I've never heard him preach a full sermon, but I'm I, telling you, his tits tits tits. Two minutes, to three minutes at a time. The clip Killing. Content. Killing. 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 I've heard mi I've heard hours of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> of uh, messages. His sprints are amazing. Now, I don't know what his marathons look like, but nigga be sprinting his butt off in the word of God. His minutes are great, but I I, uh, I think that is absolutely right. A lot of times people are... Okay, so life does throw you some limits, right? Life does, you know, uh -huh. you, you know, listen, everybody in this room is uh, started off poor and brown-skinned. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were That's disadvantaged. None of our parents in this room could even pay for our college straight up in our pocket. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we were the poorest people in the world, but I, I can say with confidence, we start out of a little bit of a disadvantage. Right. Uh, but then you got to start playing the game. You know what I'm saying? And you're, you're, you booking this pilot and you having, uh, owned a home, oh, oh, currently owning a home and having owned a home for the last, I don't know, 15 years, something like that yeah. in LA. Uh, is the result of your good decision making. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you went to college, you went to grad school, you work hard, you, uh, you um, make good choices, good decisions. You are good to work with. These are the, res the, the your current situation, mm -hmm. even being in this podcast room, uh, talent, consistency, work ethic, timeliness, uh, but <laughs> you know, uh, you, you do what you can do. Uh -huh. Uh, and then there's other people who, who started out with us and I mean like same, same situation as us and maybe didn't make the same choices, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I would have dropped out of college and I was about to, if my wife didn't take out them loans to save your boy, mm -hmm. then I can't get that job at Boeing, right? Yeah, yeah. Although I could have done that job at Boeing, I couldn't have got that job at Boeing because you had to have a college degree. If I don't have that job at Boeing, Melissa don't have that job. If we both don't have that, then our kids yeah, yeah, don't yeah. go to private school. Maybe we can't own a home, whatever the case is, which is allows me to do X, Y, and Z. So, you know, like, like when I wanted to work in daycare, right, I worked in daycares and I thought that was my job. But when my director told me, like, if you don't own a daycare, right, you're never going to make that much money. Right. She was like, I'm the director of this. I make more than you, but I don't make a lot of money. Good yeah. money. So if I was just dead set on working at daycares, that's my choice. Yeah. But it means I wasn't going to put my kids in private school. Yeah. So I can't then complain. Mm -hmm. about my situation if I haven't, this is just the way I think, if I didn't do anything to change right. my situation. But I think people often, I don't know, uh, back to the TikTok thing, go ahead. But I'm going to say, this is something I used to say in one of my talks uh, when I was doing uh, tour, a speaking tour. And it was something that my mother gave me. And I think I've said it on this podcast before, I'm going to say it again. We're all dealt cards, right? In yep. life, we yep. all have a hand. But there are people who, if we're talking about spades, that have a handful of spades that are, in uh, and, and some other books, that are out here reneging. <laughs> Talk left good, and Angel. Right. They Talk re good. They reneging left and right, left and right. And there are people who got clubs, diamonds, and two spades that waited and played their cards appropriately yes. and still come out on top. And a lot of people try to pretend as if Oh, no, like, this is the reason why my life is like this. I only had clubs and some diamonds, but it's just like, but you still could have played better. You out here, uh, uh, somebody put down a diamond, and then you over here cutting it with, uh, uh, trying to cut it with a club, and you wonder why they took four of your books. 
Because you're making ba- poor decisions. You're making poor decisions. And it, you're not going to get a good hand every time. You're no matter not. how. A, a good space player isn't built with good hands. Watch this. Right, Come on. You ain't built with good hands. Anybody can play the good hand. Anybody. It's how you play when you're dealt a poor hand. Mm-hmm. You ain't got number two, two low spades. You ain't got no good ace of king. Yeah. How you going to get two books when you ain't even got nothing but a possible? Uh-huh. You got to read the board. Yeah, you, you got do. to watch. Yeah, you do. And be, yeah, that boat. Come on. You got to pay attention. Your life is built with the bad hands. Yes, it do. Good hands are easy. Mm. It's playing them bad hands that's going to separate the wheat from the tear. Come on. Yeah, that boat. Yes. That's true, though. And in life, you, listen, it's about... It's about putting yourself in position to win, taking the right risk. Yeah. Because that's another thing that people just, truth, it's just the truth. Yeah. People don't, the fear of failure holds back most people. Mm-hmm. The fear of taking that risk mm-hmm. and having it not work, either that embarrassment, the potential for embarrassment. There's a lot of people who could have had a better life if they were willing to step outside that comfort zone and take that risk. But that is scary. But a lot of times you stay where you are, good or bad, because it's safe. I mean, it's scary. Now, I will I will not diminish the fact that once you have more responsibilities, the the risk you take has to be a little more calculated. When For you, sure. When you it's have almost like a calculated risk. Uh, come it's on, like a calculated come risk. on, hey, glory. Uh, once you have children in place in a partner that you are doing this with, huh? your spades partner, you have to work together on the risk that you're willing to take. So it's not always just like you jump out there, but this man, this TikTok man, this was not well calculated. No, listen, but to your point, when I moved to LA, 29 years old, wife, mortgage, child, child. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Most people would be well within their rights to say, I can't move to L.A. Mm-hmm. I have missed that chance. I've got to make sure my kids have something safe to do. Mm-hmm. Nobody on earth would have blamed me for staying at Boeing with two children to feed and a mortgage and a wife who also works at Boeing. Mm-hmm. But the cap for me at Boeing is much lower than the risk. Right. So I had those choices mm-hmm. with them kids. I wasn't I wasn't 18. And mm-hmm. child free. Uh-huh. I had everything you said. I'm, and I'm making 50 grand a year. Melissa making a little more. 55, 60. Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe 65. Mm-hmm. We was making over 100, but she was she had put us over. Mm-hmm. So, and people in Washington were like, you are an idiot. <laughs> you have a job at Boeing. Mm-hmm. They will never have another issue. Although they laid people off like 10 <laughs> years ago. And then the doggone 730. You think people didn't get fired when that, oh, laid of off when that Mac one, program? One went down of last course. night. Yes. A, a Max? Mm-hmm. A Boeing plane? Yeah, oh, trying to ground him again. Jesus. So I was like, dog, once I got kicked out of RTC, I was like, if I'm not in the military, I could get fired or laid off from any job. Yeah. If that's going to be the case, at least let me try. Mm-hmm. And nothing is safe. Come on. Only your own bit. Nothing is guaranteed. Not so a all thing. I'm saying is, uh, if you don't take that risk, you can't be mad at yourself if you didn't even try. If you tried and failed, and I'm not, listen, I am, I'm gonna lay it all out on the thing, you know, the same thing with, keep your, I'm not keep your distance, uh, Real Comedians Tour, I was like, whew. It's still, you gotta still acknowledge what you did in your, um, in your documentary. You do have to acknowledge the fact that things are calculated, where it's not haphazard. Me going into acting, was not a haphazard, like, yeah, nah, yeah. I'm going to risk it all on this. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to train as hard as I can so that they're going to have to deny me on something stupid. It's not, they can't, they ain't going to mm-hmm. deny me on talent. It's mm-hmm. going to be something like, she too tall, she's bigger than what we want. Right. Or we something you can't make. control, period. Something that I cannot control. Uh, her, I, her eyelashes ain't long enough naturally. Boom. And they will discount you on those things. Oh, yeah. It'd be some small stuff. And you just have to, this is the L I have to take. Even the same thing with becoming an influencer. It was, while it was a choice that I made, not understanding that, oh, it could lead to money. It was not a choice that I made. And I bet it all on it, not understanding that, like, 
certain bills have to be paid and I need to have a plan for that. Yeah. And for this man in this cubicle living that he was doing, I don't believe, I think he was just like, oh, this will be a cool experiment, but not really taking into consideration. Then listen, he might have a wonderful savings that he will win yeah. him. Him taking this leap might be something that he actually had planned for longer than this. But yep. by the way, it's being told in the story. This was a, uh, a like social experiment yeah. that garnered him some success, but it doesn't sound like he has a real plan on how to keep this success. Well, that's part of it going. too. Cause listen, I'll, I'll, I'll be straight up honest. Some of my success is, is I, I want to say luck, but God blessings, opportunity, all of that stuff. Like Zay Zay's videos blowing up was not part of my plan mm -hmm. at all. That was just, wow, this is great. Them, us coming to LA to shoot that movie. Never in my plan did I say my kid's gonna blow up. It wasn't even, I was literally just making that video so he would stop asking me. Um, but then flipping that, what was part of, you know, I won't say my plan, but like my strategy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, which reminds me of the next story, unrelated, but you just reminded me of it, I don't know how. Uh, Netflix, okay, this is the next story. Net Netflix done said, um, no more. Y'all going to stop this. No more across. password sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we done raised the price. It's 1999 for the premium. Jeez, and I think 999. That is, that is astronomical. Starting one, from what? Like $5 service. What was Netflix when it first started? 599. 599. 799. I think. Okay. That's what with the DVDs. They were, they were shipping them out. Okay. So they don't went from seven to uh, 20. Okay. For the oh. more screens and stuff like that. Password sharing has always been a part of, Something they understood. They they know people password share. Yeah. They 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 they're well aware, right? They just didn't stop it for a long time. This year they were like, all right, we enough. If you have a household, I think it's like two devices. If people are watching outside of that section, you're gonna have to pay and add them on. People start the the consensus now is that this is Netflix Netflix's blockbuster moment, right? Mm -hmm. Where they 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 go from rising to them uh their descent i don't think so well there's too many shows that we want to watch on there that we cannot watch anywhere else yeah i watched a whole season of is it cake <laughs> did you really yes i love those baking shows so much it's it was so good it's such Kevin. good, such the good content. season finale the man made a briefcase <laughs> A suitcase, a vintage suitcase. The woman made a vintage sewing machine. Like, I was like, I this is, they are so good. You should have seen me going on Skillshare trying to see if there was a class to figure this out. And let me tell you, you can find just about any class on Skillshare. All right? Yeah, you can. If you are trying to take your creativity to another level and join a community of curious, creative people, you got to go to Skillshare. There are members around the world that love Skillshare for discovering inspirational, learning new skills, uh, excuse me, discovering inspiration mm -hmm. and learning new skills and putting their talents to work in ways that they care about. Skillshare offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a new learning growth and connection through creativity specific class that I took that I've talked about a lot is uh, what is a vision board by um, it was taught by Jamie Smith. It is one of the dopest class I've ever made uh, taken. Excuse me. Um, I'm not sure if you all like to do vision boards, but I do. This is the first time I was able to complete my vision board in one sitting. Not only that, I really learned a lot about myself while making it. I learned about what my life truly is is in like areas that I want to improve on. And I feel like for the first time, my vision board represents in totality what I would like to have happen for me in 2022. And that was a 25 minute class mm. that opened like 25 minutes. That was, it was it almost a little bit felt like a therapy session of just doing the vision board. But that's something you can get on Skillshare. Like you can't like. You can't. <laughs> You can't be over here trying to figure out, like, what can you do? What classes can you take and not go to Skillshare to see? You mm -hmm. know, whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, 
your creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. Experience real improvement with hands-on projects and classes designed for real life, most under an hour broken into short lessons. Let me tell you, if I figure out how to make one of these realistic cakes from Skillshare, don't at me because it's over. <laughs> Your girl's don't over. Don't at her. I'm going to have a whole new TikTok just for me making cakes. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash SK. And get, and get one month free trial. That's one month free trial at Skillshare.com slash SK. SK. I'm giving the ads. No, you're not, OVO Angel. Give me you. another chance. No, no. Okay, so here's why I don't <laughs> think Netflix is going to be in trouble from this. One, if you, they're, they're not talking about me watching from my own like IP laptop and things like that. They're not talking about me, the account owner, uh, doing that. They're talking about me giving my password to Angel or to Josh, they live in different households. So people are like, do they realize people are gonna start canceling? Here's why I don't think so. I'm the owner of my Netflix account. I share with my brother and my sister-in-law, okay? They have had this password for the last seven years, okay? To Netflix, right? Either my brother and sister now pay for Netflix or they stop watching Netflix. Either way, Netflix doesn't lose a viewer. And they have not lost any money. They haven't lost anyone because you weren't going to pay. Right. Anyway. Right. If you stop watching, who cares? They're not, their shows are not uh, ratings wise. They don't use the ratings to pay advertisers. Mm -hmm. All they care about is subscription. Mm -hmm. Their problem is if I get frustrated and I turn it off. Yeah. I have no reason to stop paying because I've always been paying. So if they lose the passers on and the hangers on, it don't really matter because they were never paying for it anyway. There's people who are, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I w I'm trying to figure out how they're going to make this work though. Because like, for instance, when you stay at an Airbnb or like a resort, you can log in to your Netflix to watch. Is that not going to be? So they basically said, I was reading an article about, about that. They're not tripping about that as much. Well, how do they know the difference? They, they don't care. They're not, they, they said they're willing to lose the hotel TV business. What they're more sick of is people in three different households in three different parts of the nation paying. And what they said they're going to do is you, Kevin, if you don't change your password and lose these people, you're going to be locked out. So that's what I'm saying. I think you're missing my point. So that means you can't do this at an Airbnb no more. You can. But how they gonna know the difference between they, you no. at an Airbnb or you uh, at a? Or so I'm just. They don't care if you watch it on a hotel TV. They're not caring about that. They're caring about three separate households. When you log into your smart TV at home in in Chicago and in South Carolina and in LA, they're like, one of y'all is paying for this. Two other people are are not. Y'all two aren't going to be able to do this anymore. Now, if they go to a hotel and enter my password, Netflix is like, that's minimal loss because that doesn't happen all the time. Mm -hmm. They're more concerned with daily use in separate households off of one person's pain. And let's see, because let me tell you what the problem going to be. For instance, if this pilot get picked up, mm -hmm. I will be in a different household than my husband for three months. Right. So they have a set. They, I don't know their whole business model, yeah, but what, but they're, but, but, but what they're saying is similar to a cell phone. Mm -hmm. you, just like my premium thing, I can watch it on four screens, right? I pay for like four people can be watching it at the same time mm -hmm. and download that. They'll, they'll, they'll figure out a way to do that. Or maybe they'll get confused on you and be like, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how they gonna know? Maybe they'll, that's a very unusual situation that doesn't happen that often. So you either explain to them or they cut you off and you lose. I'm going to have to talk to them. <laughs> but I, I don't think Netflix actually loses that much from this deal because most people who were watching for free were likely never, ever, ever going to pay. Yeah. Or they pay now. Yeah. Either way, Netflix doesn't lose because what they want is more subscribers. And it's, because, it's happening because Netflix is... Uh, growth in the United States is plateauing. They have 200 million subscribers globally, which is more than 100 million of their next competitor. And that's that's people who actually pay. How many people watching could even double, maybe even triple, right? Um, but to Netflix, if a show is watched ridiculously and basically pirated, they don't get nothing from that, except maybe word of mouth. But they already got enough. That's the problem. If they've already plateaued, y'all got enough goddamn money. Well, this is America, baby. Money, 
I there's mean, never enough because they remember now. Remember they keep they keep uh, adding debt. You to guys grow. got Beyonce. That costs a lot of money for them, bro. That's twenty million. They Dave Chappelle got twenty million like six times. They, they made all of that back. I don't think they made it back. If they got two hundred million, they, they users, made it back overall. They got that money back. They stop spending so much money. Listen, stop they, spending so much. Money. Somebody made a good point in here. They said YouTube Premium tracks easily. When I I have YouTube Premium. Oh yes. When I go from, well, I use YouTube Premium yeah. all the time. You when I about, take my iPad to when I travel, Chattanooga, it'd be like, where is you? this? Ain't your house? Yeah. When I travel, what is you doing? And I'm watching YouTube TV. They're like, how long are you here for? Is it temporary? Yeah, YouTube TV. We're trying to make sure you get the right channels, but is it temporary? Yeah. But we really trying to right. figure out who is this? Yeah. yeah. Because. You, Netflix is a technology company. They'll figure out how to, to figure out who's, who's get watching. That Nord VPN. <laughs> have to get a Nord VPN. I'll be like, don't tell them where I'm at. Don't you tell them. You should, you hush them up. But let me tell you what, this is, this is the same problem. Kevin Stage studios has the amount of subscribers we have. Mm -hmm. Isn't accurately reflective of how many people actually watch. watch because I know, I know people they want to watch. They ain't got the money. They either sign up for a free trial and quit. Keep doing that. We see a lot of that. They share passwords. Keep your distance, you know, is is like fight parties. There's no way to really stop that. Right. One person buys it. People watch it. Mm -hmm. Eight, you know, we was seeing people in the backyard watching it. You know, it's just like, ha, ha. Yeah, there like was, especially during the pandemic, it was 30 people at your house. Well, there was yeah. a this was a pandemic. That's 30 people who did not pay the ticket. They were like, we all got COVID. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, for you, for the KOSS app, I understand because you have not plateaued yet you can't look at the american um what you call that demographics in population and be like yeah that's it for me that's it uh there's no more <laughs> but netflix 200 million users in the u.s 200 million total total yeah 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 oh total total so overseas too overseas too they are right. that's the thing like this is one thing I do like about the Kevin Stage Studios app. We, we're not going for total world domination like that. So we'd be like, okay, we got enough to do this here. You know, and people are like, I'm going to tell y'all, look, single me out, Josh. I'm going to tell y'all this right now. Kevin Stage Studios app, the streaming service. We not, we not Netflix. People keep asking, when are y'all going to put movies on there? Never, probably, unless we're licensing them. And I'm going to start making some movies. Y'all just, y'all keep watching. There's some stuff in development. Mm -hmm. Them movies is going to be sold separately just like disney plus be doing they'll be like you could watch mulan the live action but you're gonna pay for it and then you can watch it on our stuff <laughs> right you can we can't we'll listen movies cost a lot of i can't afford to pay all that for a movie watch it on the app you spent an hour and a half done and it didn't lead to no subscriber or people downloading the app just to watch that movie and then turning it off yeah so y'all just be mad if y'all got to you be understand be sad it's not going to be free on the app. If y'all got to unsubscribe, y'all got to unsubscribe. I hope y'all come back. I hope you watch the movie. But I'm telling you straight up and down. Up and down. I ain't finna be able to pay for that. This app is already wildly expensive. Already. Salaries. Workman's comp. Yeah, vacation. We got workman's comp? Sick days. You don't, but. Oh. <laughs> you don't work for that. Yeah, you don't, Josh. Paid vacation. Uh, upkeep. Air conditioning, all the above. That movie's gonna be sold. Just understand, if the big boys can do it, Netflix is Netflix. Mm -hmm. This is Kev on stage studio. This is a very different business model. We do not have like this is the thing that <laughs> we see people. I look at some of the comments when people quit the app. Somebody really said this. Listen to me, Josh. Listen to me, Angel. Listen I'm to me. I'm listening people. to you. They don't have as much con as much content as Netflix. No. What? They don't have as much content as Netflix. This is why people have left. I said, y'all, as much content. Even if you have been live streaming your life <laughs> onto the app since you started the app, we still would not have as many minutes nor hours as Netflix. Netflix? The biggest streaming service in the world by a hundred million. This little app, little streaming service that's financed by two folks <laughs> doesn't have as much. No, 
No, that's that's the equivalent of saying, well, Angel, you sell your mama's likes boxes and you sell your merch, but you don't have as much products as Nike. No, as Macy's. Like, what are you doing? Do you, no, I can't. No, I don't. I don't believe I do. The person who there's people who who work at Netflix who make more money than the app does <laughs> for a year. Employees. Employees. Not even the C, all the C. I'm talking about. Just some managers who probably make, not even probably, Netflix, a lot of their uh, executives level uh, salaries is public. Mm -hmm. Just their salary, not stock options, not bonuses. Just that person Jesus. is making more money than the app generates in revenue. And y'all think we can make as much stuff as Netflix? Yes. They had a movie with The Rock. I'm going to tell you one of the funniest things I had. It was both blow my mind and also people believe in me more than I ever realized. Uh -huh. <laughs> Folks said, man, if Abbott Elementary don't get picked up, pick up season two, Kev. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Is that me, Kevin? Oh, yes. You pick up a network television. <laughs> Do it, Kev. Pilot. That's only what that probably each episode only costs about two to three million to produce. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Come on, Dog. get your Steve Harvey on. <laughs> Just the pilot, the development experience for the pilot <laughs> was up, millions of dollars. Kevin, pick up season two. Quit. Listen, you're going to quit playing in people's face. You can pick up season two. They know. I've had people say, man, Kev should, Kev should get the game. Bring that back. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, guys. Kevin. Guys. Stop playing in these people's face. They know what's the real <laughs> Let me deal tell you is. What I'm, I think the Lord in heaven above, Angel, Tahir, and Tony be doing the acting <laughs> and don't even charge me what they could get. Even if they were like, hey, I, you got to start paying me. Kev on stage studios is over. <laughs> Come to Patreon. See me on the road. If Angel Tony or to here was like, I, I, I talked to my agent. You got to pay me my day rate. Hey, y'all. All right. Let's start. Uh, <laughs> let's That'll, do it. That'll do you it. That'll do it. You ain't got to that. worry about me. You ain't All right. Have me that box. Have me that box. Let me take that sign down. <laughs> Go ahead and start putting some of this stuff in here. Man, that was fun. I was I had such a good time making them videos. Oh, you were so stupid. We had a good time. Remember we made the challenge show? Boy, <laughs> love me that challenge show. Yeah, I did. Anyway, so Kev on stage gonna be going on a 700 city tour. <laughs> We in, 10 days. <laughs> in 10, ten days, we gonna start in chat. All them cities I talked about, Chattanooga, Chattanooga, seven nights only. <laughs> El Paso, Texas, two weeks. <laughs> San Antonio, two below, all them cities I said I never back. come to. San Antonio, March first through June 29th. <laughs> Two below Mississippi, 12 shows only, baby. Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I'm going to be, hey, we having a show in your backyard. <laughs> Buffalo, Tennessee. New York. Yeah, Buffalo, New Buffalo. York. You are back and also every Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> in America. You can get two lemon peppers and a comedy show star Kev on stage. Right, I'm going to bring you your wings personally. Guess who else with the mic. Back. The Playmakers. We're back. We're doing sketches. Ha, ha, ha. Earl and Cheryl, whatever. <laughs> do the wedding walk. Earl and Cheryl. Do the wedding walk. That was Clayton Earl's Earl Clayton. and Cheryl. There we go. All deaf digital. <laughs> Kev on stage's return. Roast me. The drop. <laughs> Squadcast. <laughs> All deaf women, he's going to be on there in a wig. <laughs> in a wig. All deaf Latino, como estas, Nacho Libre? I'm gonna, I'm gonna Me be and back. my mom doing a podcast. <laughs> Let's go. Dear Kev, right back. <laughs> the Love Hour, Kev is doing it alone. <laughs> right back. It's right back. I don't understand. We is barely making it by the grace. By the, mm. I watched the rough cut of the second episode with my that family. I need to watch it too. When I tell you, the ending is so funny. We were in there screaming. Listen, my uh, Zay Zay likes that show, uh -huh. and he likes that episode. 
that's a great barometer of if it's good or not. Because mm-hmm. he don't be laughing. And I watched that first episode. I laughed hard. Ugh. He was like, Dad, Father, you need to watch this episode. Because I'm a little behind. I was doing rewrites uh-huh. all weekend. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to watch I'm gonna watch that again. I was talking to my agent about that show. He was like, quiet is kept. <laughs> Send me that episode. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't think people understand... <laughs> How much we are trying to make this work with, with God's grace, mm-hmm. a lot of belief, people people having enough money to pay for half of their whole production of a show, mm-hmm. <laughs> and being willing to do it and waive their talent fee and being like, all right, we'll, let's go half. Y'all don't know when Angel said, "Let's go half." Oh God! Oh God! You know, friends who could believe waive a fee and then pay. <laughs> That's the friends you need when you building. Tony the Baker said, "Man, I, I'm pulling up." He pulls After all everything he's been through, he do he to hear. He he and y'all, let, let, I'm telling y'all, y'all think I'm being joked. The, the, the what to hear Tony and Angel really get paid? Duh, what's good would have been still in my head <laughs> <laughs> if Angel and to hear oh, what's good, were, so good. <laughs> on on tour with me, and we all still didn't have Josh and being stuck in cities for three days. Yeah. Because we looked at the budget again without that. We were like, that's a lot. What's good? This <gasps> isn't. Oh <my> <laughs> we'll see you guys. This is why I, now, now, this is one show that I get why people passed on. Because they hear travel and they're like, nope. Mm. Before you even get to paying people, flight, hotel per diem for mm-hmm. all them people. Mm-hmm. All the crew, budget's above the line. Everything's above the line. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you can't just book crew from out of town because you'd be inconsistent yeah, it won't look skill the same. level. And then you end up wasting all the money. Mm-hmm. Right? And I learned that lesson when I worked at All Deaf. We was like, we don't got to fly a sound man in. We'll go to, uh, I don't remember what this, I think it was called Staff Me Up or Crew Me Up or something like that. Mm-hmm. We'll rent a sound man from New York. Or not, uh, not rent, but uh, hire. hire. Boy, this man came was like, y'all got a boom pole? We were like, what? What What you mean you ain't got no boom pole? What do you mean? Why you don't have that? Oh, no, nah, man. I, I He had microphones from like... Uh, iPhone has microphones where you plug it into the phone. Get walkie talkies. I'm kidding. I don't but know. We were like, then it's all bad. We don't. And if it sounds bad, it's over. It's over. You it's can over. shoot it on Reds, Aries, what James Cameron has. Mm. People will let a lot of stuff go. They will not let bad audio go. Oh, that is the that's the thing. Off. But anyway, uh, we love y'all. Yeah, we do. We will see y'all. I believe we'll, we'll figure out when the bonus episode is this week. Our, our friend books the TV show is just, we're so proud of her Aww, and happy yeah. for her. So we're going to be switching around a lot more on the bonuses. So yeah, just pay attention to the Patreon, uh, for bonus episodes. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at the conference. Bye. Jeez. Kev, while you're looking that up, I know we've been in the spirit of, of, of give gifting, gifting, giving things. Uh-huh. Um, so as a thank you to letting me do what I love, on the left side of the table, there's a very early birthday present con- containing two things. Left side of the table. Right here. The left side. Right there. Just want to make sure everybody was in here for it. Yeah, let's get to it. I, I feel like you're, you're, you're going to be very much enthused once you open it. It's Joshua. nothing crazy. It's, it's, it's a little fragile, but just because there's two versions of it, one that's, you know, a little bit more homey, and then one's a little bit more to go if you want something light. I saw you sneak it in, and I was like, oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I didn't know if I wanted to let Angel in on it Oh, or not. it's wrapping paper. Yay. Woo. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's a picture frame? Yeah, you know, it's it's something light. You know, it's something. You Let's know what see. it is? No. Uh, Victory. Josh, you know what it is? <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> Why are you stupid? Oh, it's two pictures. Yeah. It's a photo with your favorite <laughs> artist. <laughs> That I took. My face. But I can't I sell. Knew it. <laughs> put it on the I desk. put it right here. So I'm going to learn one of her songs the, on the piano and play uh, it. I got one for the desk and then one if you want to, you know, put it up at home or put it up on the wall. My campaign for ne- for the rest of this. I'm going to see what you want. She is stinking gorgeous. Yeah, she's, she is. I'm going to, I want to, well. and I don't want no help. I want to get unblocked. <laughs> I want to be back in her life. Do I need to change the way I feel about her music? Is that going to help? Give me Listen, I just, I know you said you love her singing, so I wanted I to make sure, her. I wanted to make sure you had a reference. You don't have to put it up now because it is a glass That's going to fall. Okay, it's going to make fall, me Kevin. super anxious the entire episode. She legitimately has Is it in the frame? A no. beautiful voice. She does. 
beautiful, beautiful. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. Just for at least today's episode. <laughs> oh, put it up right in the middle. There you go, Angel. Oh, oh that Marcus. It's right on time for this. Oh, no, it's my home warranty. Oh. Does she look good right there? Is she smart? She looks. She's, do I need she's to catching away? the. Just face her towards me more because she's catching the uh, the light's reflection. Oh. There it is. Perfect. She's peeking in now. Mm hmm. She's the, she's the fourth person on the podcast now. Fourth person with her pretty self. She's really pretty. Her voice is pretty. People say that she actually is more powerful than what she should be. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage, and that chick angel.